Earth is a magazine which is very very important for UPSC preliminary and mains examination along with that it is also important for other examinations which are competitive so ye jo down to earth hai every month you will be getting two magazines and this two magazines will be dealt in weekly basis so from today it is friday and every friday you are going to get this magazine which is divided into parts and will be taught to you here so here we are going to deal with three different articles which are most relevant and most important to examination the first article that we'll be taking up today is a disaster foretold and it has been published it's a hot topic in news articles everywhere and the down to earth has covered it in very very detail so it says that there's a disaster that has been foretold i think everyone knows about the joshimat incidents who have been following the current affairs now this joshimat incident is nothing new these kind of incidences have been happening in the himalayas and it is not a first event in the himalayan regions it this is what the article says we will try to understand the causes the reasons and also the impacts along with that the socio economic aspects associated with this is disaster the second article that we will be taking up today is a wild thought now this wild thought is nothing but a genetically engineered tree it's not a plant it's a tree that is american chestnut this american chestnut has in principle given an approval to go and plant into the wild so this is going to be the first tree in the history that will be given permission and now plantations across the forest is going to take place if at all if it is been granted next one is the element of mystery this is an article which talks about uh, the lead pollution how this lead pollution is impacting the day to day life activity and also it all talks about sources and other various elements so today the first article it is the disaster foretold now what is this disaster foretold this disaster is foretold is nothing but the joshimat incident it has been foretold many years before there has been a report in the year in the month of september that is is said that the joshimat is going to subside very soon and within 12 days there is a subsidence of near about 5 cm this is the largest subsidence in the recent history so before we get into this article i would like to show you few locational aspects with respect to joshimat and one cultural aspect with respect to joshimat firstly joshimat ka ek cultural significance kafi zyada hai now it has a historical understanding that joshimat is one among the four great mats which was started by the adi shankara acharya adi shankara acharya it is an ancient mat one is in dwaraka second one is in rameshwaram third one is in puri and the fourth one it is in badrinath that is nothing but the joshimat here these four mats are started and one among those mat is nothing but jyotirmat this jyotirmat is the one which is located near to this joshi mat right so first let us go and see the locational aspects of this joshi mat and we'll try to understand the further nuances into it see in terms of location joshi mat is located on the one of the faulty lines of the himalayas so this is an area which is on an average at a height of 1800 meters and it is li lying on a steep slope with an angle of near about 30 degrees this is considered to be one of the good slopes and down the jyotishmat you will see a deep valley which is cut by the rivers so and if you look deep into this valleys you will see that this is also the zone of paleo landslide now what is this paleo landslide paleo landslide is nothing but erstwhile there was a big landslides in the centuries before and little later the development of this joshimat started to happen on that landslide itself landslide slumping area so if you start to dig deep down this joshimat you will get to know that there are some boulders there will be some pebbles and there will be particles which are accreted and the sedimentary type of landforms will be there so this entire small place which is a habitat of 30000 odd people is located on that slope itself now come back here you also need to understand about the locational aspects of few other power projects which are in news as well now next to joshimat you will also see a small power project which has been undertaken by the ntpc that is nothing but the 
Tapovan Vishnu God Power Project. See, look at this Tapovan Vishnu God Power Project. It is a runoff river project which has been taken up, and this runoff river project is nothing but one of a project which involves. Imagine that this is a river flowing, and instead of you constructing a dam here, what you will do, what this type of projects take up is, they will be opening up and digging a tunnel in which you will start to generate electricity out of it. The flow of a river won't be stopped, but here the flow of the river is utilized to generate electricity. Now these are run of the river projects in simple. So, Tapovan Vishnu Ghat project over a period, what happened is that back in 2006 onwards they were digging deep tunnels into this area. So Joshimat is lying next to this tunnel, and the tunnel had passed beneath this Joshimat area, because of which you have got to see that there is some kind of subsidence. The subsidence is near about five centimeters. If five centimeters, मतलब geologically it is a very big subsidence area. right so now what does this down to earth article says down to earth article says that there were multiple warnings for the joshimat the administration has been given warnings from the various departments and in spite of those warnings there has been unplanned construction tha along with that road widening projects have been taken place and also an unsustainable urbanization has taken place there hydroelectric proje power projects which were not supposed to be constructed at a greater intensity that projects have been taken place now see once look into the joshimat as a significance of locational on the basis of location joshimat it is on the way to badrinath and badrinath kedarnath yamunotri gangotri these four places are considered to be the char dham right so on the way to badrinath everyone who has to travel to badrinath they has to go through this joshimat area joshimat here they have constructed a char dam big roads which is widening of the road projects this widening of the road projects have also caused the subsidence of the land now how is this we'll try to understand in detail one by one so firstly let us try to understand little more factual content which is given in this down to earth see down to earth says that there are three major districts in this three major districts around 60% of the disasters in the last decade or so happened in uttarakhand in these districts itself now why is why are these disasters most confined to these districts it is because it is said that these are the areas which are part of the central thrust of himalayas now what is the central thrust of himalayas central thrust of himalayas is nothing but an area where there is thrusting of two different land masses in terms of fault is taking place and here uttarkashi chamoli district and pitoragarh district account for near about 33 hydroelectric power projects which includes digging deep down tunnels right so because of this whenever there is tunneling construction that takes place so it will lead to certain kinds of subsidence now this subsidence can be because of various reasons it can be one natural causes bhi ho sakta hai when someone digs deep into the borewell maybe a borewell is dug maybe for ext extraction of oil man lo then also you will have the land subsidence you will also have subsidence because of mining as well imagine that you are digging deep down tunnels or in house mining agar aap kar rahe ho so later when the slump that has been residing there it might get accentuated the other causes can be dissolution of limestone limestone dissolution can happen whenever there are acid rains or else there can be carbon dioxide when it is mixed with acid water that can also lead to the limestone disintegration it is nothing but the disintegration of limestone through acid rains other one is ground water depletion see the reasons can be multiple but the major reason for the subsidence at the joshimat incident is because of digging of tunnels and digging of the hydroelectric power projects along with that the natural causes that are associated with this particular incident is that one this is also the area where joshimat is located at a seismic zone which is of zone 5 
seismic zone of zone 5 is an indication that it is going to have high range earthquakes nextly joshimath is situated on a sandstone which is a deposit of paleo landslide now what is this paleo landslide paleo landslide matlab ek time pe wahan pe bada landslide hua tha imagine that just imagine if there is a landslide on this area the slump of a landslide can be like this now joshimata as a city has been located on these slumpings theek hai so back in the geological time there was some kind of landslide and joshimata is located on this landslide because of this today the slumping is still active right now this slumping can happen either because of landslides or because of soil creep or because of mass movements mass movements such as erosion ki karan bhi ho sakta hai deposition ki karan bhi ho sakta hai or else it can be of any denudational processes right so see here and the other major reason for this kind of activity is that now it is also located on the main central thrust of the himalayas now what is this main central thrust of the himalayas main central thrust of the himalayas is nothing but earlier there used to be a imagine that there is a large landmass and you are compressing this landmass from both the ends slowly you will get to see some synclines and anti synclines across this plate margin or plate boundary if you completely start to press together imagine that there shall be irregular upliftment and irregular subsidences now this will lead to multiple thrusts and fault in the himalayan regions you will get to see that imagine that this is ladakh region and this is your karakoram and here you have ladakh zanskar and greater himalayas and then lesser himalayas and you have shivaliks so there is a central thrust the central thrust is a small scale fault line which is located between lesser himalayas and greater himalayas now here is where the city of joshmat joshimat is located so due to continuous movements of the chinese plate as well as the indian plate now this particular area is located in a natural subsidence area right so this is also one of the reason which is as shown here next now pictographically it is it can be represented well here one this is the tibetan plateau tibetan plateau here this is your hi higher himalayas and this is your lesser himalayas shivaliks and terai region imagine this this is the main central thrust and your joshimath is located here so on a continuous compressions on either sides because of the plate boundary movements now this particular area is under subsidence right now the other reasons if you look into that is your anthropogenical reasons anthropogenic reasons includes one construction of the hydropower project construction of the hydropower project is nothing but the ntpc constructed a power project which has dug 12 km deep tunnel if you are digging a tunnel into a hill obviously there will be a hollow and that hollow need to fill the gap that gap filling has been now done and also the constructions of the chardam project along with that tunnel boring and drying up of the water in that particular area drying up of the water is means suppose when you start to dig a tunnel in that particular area and if that tunnel punctures an aquifer what do you mean by aquifer aquifer is nothing but an area where the water is stored within the interior of the earth so if you are puncturing that lakhs and lakhs of liters of water on a daily basis it will come out of that particular aquifer and over a period there shall be drying when there is drying it is very very easy for that particular landmass to slide so landslide that can also be related to rockfall so these kind of incidences were very very common in that particular area so 
back in 1975 also there was a similar incident that took place immediately after that dadan government has formed a committee under the leadership of chairmanship of mc mishra this mc mishra committee has said that any construction if it is taking place in that area it need to be restricted and that restriction should take certain guidelines now what are these guidelines the first guideline says that check the soil's weight and the bearing capacity of that particular area and only then give the construction permits and it has strictly said no to the hydroelectric power projects yes it has also said that if at all any construction permission is to be given a similar amount of material also need to be replaced in that particular area there should not be any boulders if at all there are boulders that boulders need not be moved and that bouldering material should also be replaced if a road is constructed a road should not seep in the waters these kind of multiple guidelines have been given in that particular report so slopes which are there they should not be utilized for agriculture etc now the list is big many more big lists and this is not just for this particular area the similar kind of application can be seen across the himalayan regions where there is natural slums that are taking place right so let me read some lines from this report of the down to earth which says that underground seepage erosion by the nine nalas and several types of anthropogenic activities have made the region vulnerably weak to the extent that one block of the slope wherein kamath seema village and the towns of jochi mata are located to slide down with a repeated rate of more than 1 cm per year see back in 2006 again you have this multiple reports have been given it's not just about 1976 report there is also a 2006 report and if you look into the down to earth also says that there is a 2022 report which said that in the month of september itself it says that ground subsidence induced structural def defects and damage are observed in the houses and other structures in almost all wards of the joshimat this is in the month of september now what does the article say article says that foretold stories with respect to disasters were already being told one back in 1976 2006 2022 and also other reports which include 2021 in the month of january it is also said that the subsidences incidences in the badrinath were also caused because of the extended projects which were taking place in that region now in this particular area if at all these kind of incidences with respect to disaster if not to happen in the further cases what to be done of course we know the problem we also need to know the solutions the solution lies in sustainable development the report says that sustainable development of that particular area and the disaster relief mechanisms need to be taken place rehabilitation resettlement and relocation of the people from one particular area to another area and proper implementation of the campa compensatory afforestation instead planting them at sub other areas why can't we go and plant in this region so multiple recommendations were still there reports have been given out and reports clearly mention the causes but today the incidences are of repeated failure of the recommendations which are given in the mc mishra report now let us quickly move into the next article our next article talks about a wild thought a wild thought here it is nothing but one here you can see a small genetically structured engineered tree see one such tree that is american chestnut which is considered to be a functionally extinct in the wild is now given an in principle approval to start to plant the tree in the forest now this is going to be one such incident in the history before that i would like to ask you a question if you are watching it let us take up a question from the preliminary angle and try to address this consider the following statements statement 1 says one of once a genetically engineered tree is released into the wild there will be little potential to track or revise its spread usa second statement usa is not part of sorry usa is a part of convention just a minute this is usa is not usa is not a part of convention on biological diversity which has 196 members statement 3 says american chestnut will be the first genetically engineered forest trees species planted specifically to spread freely throughout the forest statement 4 while the us is the only country that is considering the introduction of the genetically engineered trees varieties in the wild many others have been experimenting with 
genetically engineered trees varieties from commercial plantations now choose the correct option which among the above statements are correct i'd be waiting for 10 to 15 seconds if you can answer statement now statement a says only one is statement is correct only one and three are correct statement c all the above are correct and statement d only one three and four are correct okay before we answer this question let us quickly move and deal with the article and we'll come back and we'll try to address this particular question now firstly american chestnut tree it has become functionally extinct now what do you mean by functionally extinct functionally extinct means for suppose if a tree is no longer in a position to reproduce itself with the help of the naturally available services naturally available resources or natural capital may if it is no longer being part now that tree is considered to be functionally extinct every species that is present on the earth has some functional role if at all that functional role is no longer being performed the tree e or tree or any species is also considered to be extinct because there is an interaction among the species that interaction among the species is a principle which is associated with give and take now here no longer the give and take principle is taking place with respect to this particular tree right and that is when it is called as functionally extinct so before we go any further i would like to tell you the functions of the american chestnut tree dekho pehle american chestnut tree is considered to be a very good preferred food for insect larva a har species ke sath har species of tree is having this function and which in turn they are eaten by other animals such as fish and birds right true now today this function is no longer being performed you might be wondered how come larva and other plantations are not being able to eat this see because today this tree is subjected to a disease called blight disease now that blight disease is nothing but a disease here if you look into a leaf which is has black yellow orange red other different colors this is a disease when this disease is associated even the caterpillar or the larva they do not come and eat this so the primary functional of a particular tree is to provide food to the species and they in turn get other benefits from those species so the first functional aspect of this particular tree is no longer there secondly if you look into the soil activity chestnut american chestnut tree leaves will have high amount of nitrogen very good amount of nitrogen which no other plantations have on the other side they also have phosphorus they do have potassium and they do have other nutrients which only a rare elements of plantations do have so now if the leaves are subjected to these kind of diseases even the nitrogen component and other basic elements that are required for the soil are no longer being available now coming to the third aspect that is resistance to parasites it is a natural entity that this particular species has natural resistance now over a period due to consecutive subjectivism of parasitic activities onto that tree today it is no longer used as a construction capability wood now what do you mean by construction capability wood see when a wood is strong enough it is waterproof it is used in construction so because of the tree is no longer carrying its capacity to deal with the water or the waterproofing activity is no longer there with the tree so today it is not even seen as a timber growing crop it is left behind let's read it it's a natural resistance to parasites dry wood insects wear and tear of the time and bad weather makes it a wood perfectly situated for exterior cladding such as cladding and roof coverings true lastly the chestnut tree it is also utilized for the pulp furniture making but today it is no longer used for furniture making also so because of this once we have to look into the socio economic aspects of this particular tree as well now wherever this tree is located it is a tropical deciduous tree and it is sorry it is a temperate deciduous tree and this temperate deciduous deciduous tree wherever it is located particular backward sections of the society are also living with that and the minor forest produce of this particular tree are being utilized for their well being today the people who are associated with this particular plantation are also not in a position to utilize that natural resources which are given by that particular tree right and 
in this context one should also know about a disease called blight disease now what is this blight disease i have already told you that any of various plant diseases which will be having sudden black color blue color yellow color or dying leaves where fruits and stems or other entire plant will no longer be in a position to regain its strength that is blight disease so usa what does it has done for the first time it has developed a particular enzyme that enzyme is taken from a wheat crop and they have cross breeded it with this particular tree chestnut tree so today the wheat enzyme se jo en wheat crop se jo enzyme nikla is crop se what did what did they do they created an en particular enzyme which will block the blight disease so it is named as darling 58 and this darling 58 will now protect the american chestnut tree right so this is what the story of the american chestnut and here we have to understand the other possibilities which are associated with this event now what causes the functional extinction of the american chestnut here the causes are nothing but first initially there used to be a disease called ink disease and later the ink disease further accentuated to become a chestnut blight and this chestnut blight today it is eating up the entire chestnut forest and when it comes to the soils in that particular area they are also called as chestnut brown soils in this area they are also called as just a minute chestnut brown soils see this chestnut brown soils today their capacity to carry a particular crop has come down why because the pollens of these species and the material of these species are being able not being able to carry for long the wind agents and the erosions are not being able to carry because of that today this chestnut brown soil carrying capacity has also come down and it is no longer being in a position to cater to the local area and if you come and look into the various genetically engineered crops across the world and i have already told you this is one first of the such kind of an incident jahan par engineering trees genetically engineering trees are being subjected to the forest agar yahi hua maan lo aapne koi kuch crop ko you have genetically engineered once the genetically engineered crop is left into the wild can you revive it back can you stop it back if there is some wrong thing that is going on today in india we have already done one such thing that in the name of bt cotton and we are also going ahead with the processing of the mustard crop as well dara mustard so when we started to plant the cropping part, crop of the cotton into the fields we later got to know that it is now subjected to a particular pathogenic resistance so cotton is naturally grown crop we have engineered it and that engineered crop is no longer in a position to resist to the naturally grown pathogens now it is resistant to some other other pathogens so over a period the bt cotton is also having a criticism now bt cotton is just a small crop it is man man controlled crop but can you also go for a big tree which is naturally grown in the forest and convert that into a genetically engineered crop and later if at all some wrong happenings might be there so how do you are going to revive it back that is the biggest question which is there in front of us so the same kind of discussions have also been taken place in the cop 9 this recently held cop 15 now in terms of the biological diversity here they have said that they have already signed a white paper now white paper is nothing but a policy making paper to push that policy making to stop the policy making or to expedite the policy making some agreements will be taken unofficially and that agreements will be put forward at the conferences so such kind of incidences are already happened and one such incidents you can see for the eucalyptus as well as the american chestnut so across the global level let us try to see where do you find this genetically engineered plants firstly if you see this that is released into the wild released into the wild is taken by the brazil brazil has released eucalyptus into the wild with genetically engineered crops as well as this is the first but here they have only gone for the field trials in a circulated or circumvented area jahan par unka control pura hai 
in that area itself they have left into the forest now in india we have also planned to grow similar kind of crops with respect to rubber but we do not have clear cut permissions with respect to government clearances to isliye humne field trials pe hi stop kiya gaya tha on the other hand you look into this american chestnut american chestnut if it is given approval now this approval will be for the wild so this is something which you need to look into let's quickly once look into the cop 9 that is 2008 mein genetically modified trees ke liye kuch conventions leke aaya tha hum log and in this convention it is said that whichever are the parties to this convention they should be very cautious with respect to the publishing or releasing of materials into the wild and brazil being a party to this has already released in a circulated area jahan par complete conventions of biological diversity has taken place and they are planting these plantations but to remember it is a fact that usa jo hai usa is not a signatory to the convention on biological diversity that's why us is going for this particular wild plantations of the genetically engineered crops of american chestnut so once let us quickly go back and read the question that we have taken up now consider the following statements the first statement is once a genetically engineered tree is released into the wild there will be little potential to track or reverse its spread yes the statement is right second statement usa is not a part of conventional on convention to the biological diversity which has 196 members yes usa is not a party american chestnut will be the first genetically engineered forest tree species planted specifically to spread for freely throughout the forest yes it is the first species brazil mein jo jo hua tha it is a confined area pe controlled area pe ye plantation kiya gaya you might be wondered why am i using the controlled area confined area because these are the words which have been mentioned in the report it is not a reserved area it is not a reserved forest they say that it is a confined area now what is the mean by confined area confined area wo hota hai jahan pe pura control hai control in terms of the pesticides control in terms of their natural natural services natural capitals bhi ho natural resources bhi ho that is called a confined area right but usa is planning for forest it is clear directly going and cultivating into the forest fourth statement while the us is the only country that is considering the introduction of the genetically engineered tree varieties in the wild yes in the wild it is only usa india mein jo rubber plantations we are trying to do it is plantation crop we are not growing that in the wild we are growing only on the plantation areas jahan pe license and regulated licenses shall be given next many others have been experimenting with ge trees varieties for a commercial plantations yes many are experimenting but none is experimenting within the wild so the right answer would be all of the above so many of you have commented that it is d and uh, b yes okay now let's come back let us look into the socio economic aspects see here social economic aspects and the potential changes also you need you need to know about the introduction of a particular species into the wild now i've already told you most of the areas jahan par agar koi species extinct hai and that species will be associated with some natural functions and that natural functions are related to some socio economic aspects so most of the tribal regions which are residing in that particular area what happens is that they are no longer to access that particular minor forest produce today what you did is that you went and you planted this tree there and you spread it into the wild now if at all any kind of unforeseen circumstances that you see who are the first ones to be affected the first ones to be affected is none other than the local people and whenever a genetically engineered crop is published into the market the complete crop shall be patented theek hai that means the control of the crop will be only in few hands if at all there is a benefit out of it the benefit will be taken by the patent authority if at all there is a problem they simply leave it so in usa the kind of activity that is going on is associated with a private entity now there are criticisms the criticism is that the funding to the genetically engineered chestnut is driven by the american timber industry kyunki timber industry mein american chestnut is one of the finest crop but 
over a decade or so couple of decades or so this crop is not giving a good yield so they want to invest back onto this tree and they extract now if at all that wants to be extracted why should they go for wild plantations why can't they go for commercial plantations in which a confined area may they can grow this is another criticism other area is that once if it is entered into the wild now the tribal people or the local authorities are the ones are going to get impacted and the benefits to them shall not be shared this is another criticism which is in news as well and lastly tree co plantation companies jo hai they will need to buy the rights to use the patented trees every time they need to plant a new tree yes i told you it is owned by a private entity now if this private entity wants to give you the crops obviously you have to pay the money or you have to pay the required licenses and the tree is designed in such a way that it's a transgenic that means it is no longer in a capable position if you are going for a plantations that a natural seed i only that seed is capable to grow one more plant that means it takes 200 years more to generate a new forest why 200 years 200 years is because the life of a chestnut tree is near about 200 years and in that the gestation period for this particular tree is more than 35 to 40 odd years so such a big gestation period cannot be entertained and lastly large areas of the forest are owned and inhabited by the indigenous people and the biodiversity fuels local economies and holds cultural significances with the sacred sites that form the identities of the indigenous communities yes i have taken these lines directly from the report itself the report says that yes the tribal communities are the ones which are going to get impacted overall ek socio economic balance agar yahan pe hum log maintain kar sakte and also instead of throwing it into the world the way forwards which you can think forward is that initially try and test them into a confined area like the brazil is doing in india we are going for plantation crops if at all this tree needs to be catered to the forest timber then in such a case grow it in a confined area right now let's move to the next article the next article talks about elements of mystery are what are these elements of mystery elements of mystery is nothing but there are certain elements they are doing some mysterious activities that is nothing but your lead lead ek naturally found component hai and lead once it enters into your body it creates a lead pollution that lead pollution it will not react with your body it simply stays in your blood but what does it do it does some kind of unique activities jahan par aapka growth hinder kiya jayega and then neurological symptoms with unforeseen circumstances can be seen maybe you wanted to walk but you will crawl you wanted to grow but you will be stunted these kind of activities can be seen so lead pollution ka causes diya hua the down to earth has given a clear cut lead pollution guidelines here it has taken and said that the disasters related to the lead in the recent times have increased and india around around 23% of the total states in india are currently having this widespread problems associated with lead and lead ka pollution tab tak pata nahi chalega tab tak aapko some kind of imbalance in your neurological activity is seen or else if at all a new born baby is yet to be delivered she might be facing some kind of difficulties or else if a baby is born and then the baby growth shall be stunted and adult if is he or she is consuming that lead their neurological capabilities are mismatched that means body mind coordination fail hota hai it's just like after consuming your alcohol whatever you do those kind of activities you will be doing in simple terms if i have to tell you right so let us quickly get into the preliminary mode jahan pe questions pooch sakta hai firstly what lead does lead may now look here there is a mother there is a baby in the womb and there is a baby crawling and there is a adult man or a child so firstly what happens to the fetus fetus in the see if lead consumption is taken by mother the fetus will also consume that and in this process delay in the neurological development will take place now what is the solution if at all there is any kind of delay now it says that the only solution you will have is chelating now what do you mean by chelating these types of questions can be possibility zyada hota hai preliminary mein examination mein puchne ka so killing is an activity associated with uh, the lead pollution solution to the lead pollution yes it is a solution to the lead pollution and filtration of the blood will take place kyunki once lead enters your body it will start to circulate in your body and it will hamper the growth right in this if you want to extract that lead and other heavy metals from your body 
there is a process called chelating process and that through that chelating process by using the magnetic activity what do they do they generally tend to remove these materials out from your blood right that is by using a blood thinners and blood thickeners secondly if this lead pollution enters into the infants and young children what happens now the properties that it has given is that mother's milk is one of the root inhaled air is one of the root other one is skin contact now what are the effects effects is nothing but enzymes that produce hemoglobin shall not be producing that that means the body will not be producing good amount of hemoglobin and once the hemoglobin count is done less your red blood cell producing count will be less because of which you will be having blood lead infusions and then your capacity to fight diseases will also be less and blood related diseases can be seen on the other hand what is the solution to it the solution is again chelation right thirdly if that enters into a full grown child the full grown child will again face some kind of neurological problems solution chelation again it's the same solution lastly adults what is the root of entering into adults it is inhaled air maybe you, while you are eating it is into bio magnification and bio bio magnification as well as the other process which is involved here is bio remediation to deal with the bio magnification right so diseases that are associated again reproductive capacity of an adult shall be reduced and it will impact the demographic changes also now demographic changes i have used a big word how come demographic changes can be changed it is because it is generally said that there are two different words again here that they have used the two words are avoidable sufferings and unfulfilled potentials that avoidable sufferings of a disease can be avoided the unfulfilled potentials of an individual shall be blocked by this lead pollution in india you have somewhere around 23 odd states ke andar ye lead pollution hai now what are the causes of this lead pollution we have seen that once lead enters your body you got to know that many kind of diseases you will get to get solution you got to see is chelation agar exam mein pucha gaya the kind of question will be having chelation as one of the point then most of the students will get stuck there now let's look into the sources what are the major sources for this particular pollution firstly there are sources which are associated with occupation and non occupation occupation sources can be if you are working in your battery area if you are dealing with some kind of battery production or these areas the highest chances are that your pollution you are susceptible to the lead pollution now the other way it is that lead pollution in batteries is the highest because these batteries are no longer being managed properly ek political gui- sorry ek administrative guidelines are not given because battery guidelines are coming from the lead acidic batteries which are under the batteries management and handling rules of 2001 2001 rule says that it will not clearly talk about the mentioning of lead it only talks about heavy metals heavy metals ke andar mercury bhi hai lead bhi hai and other materials can be seen so there is no clear cut guidelines to deal with the lead so that's why mismatch or confusion among the policy making is also one of the reason for this lead excess pollution now lead along with other elements sometimes lead can also bind with another element and in parts and bits and pieces it can enter with the polymetallics means multiple metallic nodules with respect to these lead can enter into your body now that turns out to be more dangerous right next is mining bhi hota hai glass manufacturing automobile repair ceramic painting pottery smelting you name it most of the metallic industries will be having this lead pollution other non occupational sources if you see these non occupational sources medicinal industry yes medicines ke andar also you will be having this lead but that is controlled and regulated but in an industry the chances of you getting subjected to lead pollution is very very high when lead in the finest format pm 2.5 se kam size pe bhi available hota hai and when in the vehicular exhaust pe you will also see this lead along with other materials because there is small elements of vehicular exhaust that is hepa filters are used here oh, now what are these hepa filters high efficiency particulate filters these high efficiency particulate filters are the ones which will filter out the lead which are coming out from the vehicular exhaust so one solution is that you go 
install the high, high efficiency particulate filters and then you can get along next one is household storage of the batteries yes battery here also here also paints ke andar also you'll also see within the paints as well and effluent lead based industries yes food grown in the lead contaminated areas now this food grown in the lead contaminated areas will have the process of bio magnification as well as bio remediation now what is this bio magnification bio magnification is nothing but if in a particular area imagine there is a lead factory and next to this lead factory there is some river stream that is going on and you started to grow the crops theek hai imagine you have grown this crops this crops will start to intake the lead particles and this crops will be eaten by other species and other species will be eaten by other species higher order in the food chain so in this food chain first the bio magnification process take place sorry the first the bio accumulation process where the accumulation of lead is taken by this particular species and then it is also being taken by an other species that is bio magnification as and when more number of higher tropic level spray consumption if it happens it is going through higher concentration of this lead and human is considered to be one among those higher species so the concentration of lead into the bio magnification process ke through humans mein zyada hi hai nextly it is now there is a small report which talks about this lead pollution now let us quickly read what exactly is written here it reads that one lesser known occupation in the report is battery work many developing and underdeveloped countries have a lack of stringent laws and poor policy implementation resulting in poor government control informed recycle sectors yes true what is this poor recycled informed sectors poor re recycled informed sectors mein ek battery sector bhi hai and also the shipping industry shipping industry mein recycling will take large amount of long amount of time so when the time duration is more the chances of pollution of this lead is also very high batteries mein shipping industries mein now this is very very high it has high concentration and coming to our last article it is a quick tit bite this article talks about the clothing industry and the carbon dioxide that the clothing industry generates now this article says that the amount of carbon dioxide that is generated by the clothing industry that is fashion industry is more than combinedly if you articulate it to the idea of the flight aviation industry along with the other air in air aviation industries theek hai air aviation industries mein it's not just the flights that are being there it is also the mechanical manufacturings that take place within the sub aerial levels now what are these mechanical manufacturings that takes place in the sub aerial levels it is maybe it also it can also be considered as the zigzag movement of the brick manufacturings so ye jitne bhi carbon dioxide if you collectively combine that is equivalent to the fashion industry that is what it says now here once let us quickly look into extraction of the raw material pay they say that polyester polyesterin this is वन सच एरिया जहाँ पे ज्यादा पोल्यूशन है ऑन द अदर एरिया इफ यू लुक इन टू इट इज सेज दैट वर्जिन पॉलिस्टर दिस इज टू मच ऑफ अ टेक्निकल एंटिटी बट वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू कन्वे हियर इज दैट द क्लॉदिंग इंडस्ट्री इज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर्स ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड कार्बन एमिजन नो वी जनरली थिंक दैट दिस इंडस्ट्री हैज लेस पोल्यूशन बट दिस रिपोर्ट सेज दैट इट इज हैविंग लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड now beyond that why is this article important this article is important because one apparel brands and manufacturers in the recent times what did they do they went in for cheap polymers and uh, production of this cheap polymers when this cheap polymers they started to produce they have realized that there are more greenhouse gases that are being emitted so cotton generally we think that cotton is a very good crop but it is revealing that cotton is also being contributed to good amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere now how come this cotton is being extracting that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere see cotton as a plant when it has to be grown it need to be grown in an area jahan par initially it has good amount of rainfall and it needs good black soil and uh, once the bowl of the cotton comes out it needs no long no rain so once this cotton is not having any kind of water in that area 
the black soil will start to shed its moisture while drying up this particular soil will start to release that gases now they have also taken into an account with respect to the agricultural activities of cotton as well last year there was a question which among the crops will be giving carbon dioxide or methane so here the context is to tell you that cotton will also give you large amounts of carbon dioxide from the from the soil emissions right that is black soil and that's it for today guys next week we'll be coming up with the rest of the articles that have been not covered in the 16 to 31st magazine and i hope you like this initiative if you do like it please press the thumb thumb thumbs up button and do tell us if you would like to add anything more to this particular session and thank you will for the ppt of this what you can do is you can go to the description below you will get that link in that link a channeling of our telegram channel is there in which you will get to see the ppt there you can download it from there thank you